It's Sunday night, 9 o'clock. Welcome to All Across Live. I'm Gary Groob in Toronto. And with me, of course, I have Sean Slatt over in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. How are you, Sean? Doing good. Thanks, Gary. And down below there, I have Muffler Mike over in Connecticut. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing good. Excellent. As, as you all can see, our new merch has arrived. Mike, you got your shirt there showing yes, about the back yes. looks like. The front looks like this. The back looks like that. If you're interested, DM us and we can figure out a way how we can get you some of this beautiful merch to add to your collection of the already building merch that we have. Anyways, busy week, guys. Preseason's well underway. Cuts are happening. Teams are trimming themselves down. A couple of weird things going on. It is still... Uh, Native American Heritage Month, so we have a few things about that. We have some OJLL news. We have uh, PLL news, of course, and they named their cities, and we're going to get into that in a little bit. But just before we get rolling, just remember that all our shows are streamed across Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch, and you can catch all the action on EOPsports.com. Remember to hit the subscribe, follow, and like buttons, and always share with your friends and family. You can enjoy all of our affiliates, and as you can see, we have many shows for many things. Uh, please enjoy the affiliates like the Broad Street Bully Podcast, Philly Press Box Radio, Edge of Philly Sports Live, Birds IQ, Patterson Avenue Fanatics, Talking Philly Sports with Maddie B, Debro Sports, Painted Lines, Party on Broad, and the Steel Steps, of course. If you've missed a show, no worries. Just grab all the podcasts on all the major podcasting companies, which include Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, and so much more. Also, you can catch it on the EOP YouTube page, any of the shows. And if you're looking for our library or any of our shows in particular, you can go to our YouTube page and all across all the time. While you're there, please subscribe. Please check out some of the interviews, some of the fights, some of the other retro games that we have up, and there's more retro games coming. Remember, you can stay up to date with all Philly sports and all other sports by visiting eopsports.com with great articles from our huge staff of contributors. While you're there, please subscribe to our newsletter. Just a reminder to everybody that this part of our program is brought to you by Dolan's. All right, guys, when you're staying local and you want to watch a great game or just hang out with some great people, make sure to go to Dolan's Bar at 24 East Sellers Avenue at Ridley Park. Right off of I-95, south of Philadelphia Airport, Dolan's Bar is the place to be. Great music, great times, memorabilia giveaways, great drinks, and even better food. You never know when a former Philly sports icon walks through the door. You've got to go to Dolan's 24 East Sellers Ave at Ridley Park. Tell PJ that EOP sent you. Go to dolansbar.com or follow them on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or even TikTok. We'll see you there for the game. Absolutely. Also, Dave is with us. Dave, how you doing, bud? Hey, Dave. Well, as for uh, as for Dave being a football guy, you know, it is a great cup day in Canada. It is the Canadian Super Bowl today for everybody but this household here because the Argos <laughs> decided that they, just, they wanted to be like uh, right. years past. And, you know, a 16 and 2 record meant nothing because they decided to go. <clears throat> and well, at, least your team, at least your team made the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, you know, me watching that game, you know, it was kind of like, you know, how do you hope for both teams to lose? <laughs> it's just, that's just the way it is, you know. Like, I, I would be happy if there was just like a, you know, a gasoline fire in, in center field and they had to call a game. Yeah, you know? I, I actually watched the first half just so I can see Green Day at the halftime show. So that was that was my my highlight of it. And now we can get on to bigger and better things because lacrosse season is here, as it was completely put out to me last week. With the Argos. <laughs> <laughs> now, just uh, the NLL helped me along a little bit there because uh, they came up with three separate announcements uh, this week. Um, the first one, of course, was of String King. And um, uh, according to their, uh, their release, um, they have re-upped their uh, agreement and partnership uh, for another three years with String King. Uh, the renewal designates String King as the non-exclusive continental partner and official equipment provider for the NLL. String King is excited to partner with the best players in the world and have them use the brand's top equipment. Players will be using String King's Mark II family of heads, Type 5 mesh, and Metal 3 Pro 
and composite two pro shafts. Uh, this partnership allows Trink King to get direct feedback from NLL players to which product is used uh, and for development for future projects. So pretty, uh, pretty significant thing that uh, this is going to continue for another three years. <clears throat> Very quality product too. String King is awesome. Now we uh, we talked uh, briefly about um, well we we put it across of the NLL unboxed idea, and again we had this uh, an innovative approach to introducing and fostering the love of box lacrosse. Uh, it's unique style of play among young boys and girls across North America. Program offers great opportunities for all players at any age, skill level to increase their competency at an accelerated rate in a fun and friendly environment. NLL Unboxed aims to provide elementary and middle schools with lacrosse specific physical education, curriculum and equipment. Uh, Unboxed will look to expand NLL's multinational footprint starting with nine new activation markets beginning in 2024 with dedicated programming plan for 60 plus North American communities by 2027. Now we're gonna tie this thing in to, they announced this uh, logo uh, addition. I can't say logo change, but addition back a few uh, few months ago. And if we all remember uh, this one here, which gave the uh, League National Lacrosse uh, in French for the National Lacrosse League. Now that ties into an announcement they made this week uh, via Zoom call um, for an, the Unbox series. And the first game that's going to be in that is going to be the NLL returning to Montreal. Or actually Laval. It's going to be returning to the Browns of Quebec um, in uh, the Place Bell, uh, February 16th. The New York Riptide have generously uh, agreed to move their home game against the Toronto Rock uh, to this uh, Laval place. <clears throat> and um, they're going to have a regular season NLL game there. Now, this is uh, it works on a couple of different levels. Uh, of course, there's their promo pick. Pretty awesome, I'd say. Um, number one, it's going into markets that they're testing to see if there is uh, any uh, substantial growth that they can build with. Number two, they're working with the teams we'll be working with, of course, middle schools and like like they said in the press release originally. And, of course, number three is to get the NLL product as far and wide as it possibly can in a regular season game. It's one thing to do it as an exhibition game or a preseason where you can kind of tape your lineups and put in all your practice squad guys. This is a regular season game, so you're going to get the whole enchilada in this thing. And the people in Laval are going to be treated to one heck of a show. Because if you take a look at the star power, just looking at Jeff Teat and uh, Challen Rogers alone, let alone everybody else that are coming with those teams, this is a really great initiative, I think, and a real uh, step forward. Um, Mike, what do you think about this? Oh, this is absolutely great. I, I think the best part of that uh, statement on the unboxed was uh, at the end where they said 60 plus north american communities yeah so that means they're you know we're gonna see some we're gonna see some initiatives in canada maybe we'll see some initiatives in mexico it's very possible very yeah. possible so, very very possible so that, uh, and you know that would be great. tripping your toe into it in a, into a market where you know uh it doesn't hurt it doesn't hurt to start with um as their press release had said um, they announced the first ever NLL Unbox Series marquee event game scheduled for Friday, February 16th at 7 p.m. in Laval, just outside of Montreal. The league's newest tentpole showcase features the NLL's two largest markets as the Toronto Rock and New York Riptide will clash in a pivotal midseason showdown. Place Bell, home of Laval Rocket, an AHL affiliate of the Montreal Canadiens, will host the 2024 NLL Unbox Series. Uh, marking the first regular season game in Quebec since 2002 when the Montreal Express played its final game there at the Molson Center. Uh, the announcement follows weeks of unveiling of the new uh, multinational grassroots initiative, NLL Unbox, including the launch of its Montreal area specific programming under the Castor de Montreal brand. Uh, according to Brett Frude, interest in box lacrosse from the grassroots to the professional level continues to skyrocket in Quebec. And we are proud to be able to take this next step in bringing the NLL and our elite athletes to Laval and the greater Montreal area. 
We are thankful to the leadership of the Canadians, especially uh, France Margaret Belanger, in working with us to host the game at Place Bell, and to both the Riptide and the Rock for their enthusiasm to move to a neutral site so they can expand our regular season audience in Montreal for the first time in more than 20 years. So yeah, lots of lots of really great uh, things going up there. And you know, again, um, we've talked about it many times that Montreal is a place to uh, bring bring the NLL. And if you bring it to Montreal, Quebec can come along as well. I don't think it'll work in Quebec without Montreal. We've seen that work before where uh, Quebec will give it its all if Montreal's got a team. It's kind of like the little brother syndrome. But, um, you know, I look forward to both markets being tapped. And I think that'd be fantastic to expand the NLL because it needs to be more in Canada. Um, it's great with all the expansion into the U.S., but uh, we're, we're neglecting a little bit of Canada now, and uh, we need uh, something in between Toronto and Halifax just to create a little more rivalry in my eyes. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be an exciting thing. Well, lastly, the uh, the NLL announced, of course, uh, that the ESPN, once again, is uh, going to be broadcasting 10 games on its networks, and everything else will be on the ESPN Plus idea. Um, Saturday, December 2nd, ESPN 2, which is the Wings at the Riptide. And uh, December 30th is uh, Riptide in Toronto on ESPNU. This gets confusing for a Canadian, man. We got like TSN and TSN Plus. That's it. <laughs> yeah, there's ESPNU and 2 and 5 and 11 and whatever else you had. Uh, ESPNU seems to have the majority of the games. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of them out of the 10 are in ESPNU. Um, a good, um, good mix of, uh, of teams. San Diego, Vegas is one of them. Colorado, San Diego, another. Colorado, Panther City, Georgia, San Diego. Uh, Toronto, Vegas, Buffalo, Colorado, Albany, Panther City, and then Buffalo, Vegas. So uh, there's, there's a wide range of uh, East and West teams in there. Uh, it doesn't hit all of them, but that's uh, you know, uh, for somebody else to take a look at. Remember that any game that isn't on the main network is on ESPN+, Plus, so you can catch it anywhere. But my big thing is, you know, I took a look at the uh, the TSN schedule. Now, remember, any game that's not on the TSN main network will be on TSN+, Plus, just like ESPN+. Plus. But there are 20 games, and there's actually four doubleheaders on the TSN thing. So I'm hoping that the, that the ESPN will follow suit. Granted, they have a lot more uh, coverage with 50 states worth of, of sports than... Uh, you know, 10 provinces and three territories as we are in Canada. But, um, you know, um, we have a really great uh, system here, and TSN is doing a fantastic job with this. And like I said, my my favorite time last year was opening weekend, and I happened to walk into a bar, and uh, on every single TV around the bar, it was uh, the Halifax game. And I just sat and marveled at this. Well, and that's I, how you get new eyes. That's well, how you yeah, get new eyes I, on the I, game, I right? I the place yeah, and just yeah. watched around. And I watched the people. And, you know, it went from people having conversations like you and I uh, just talking now. And before you knew it, all the eyes were up on the screen. It didn't take very long. So it's a great initiative. I hope that they uh, keep pushing to more than just a game in a week. A couple of the teams, of course, Comcast and a few others out there have, uh, you know, uh, Altitude, I believe, in Colorado, and a few others uh, have their own local ones as well. So that's that's really great news. Um, the more, the merrier. Uh, we can't get enough people to uh, to get eyes on this thing, and like you say, Sean, um, to get new eyes on there. Because you and I, we'll watch it on a washing machine if we could. Yeah. It doesn't make a difference. You tell me, tell me what the hell. I watch it on a pen if I had to. I watch it on my watch if I had to. Doesn't matter. But to get new eyes on there, it's really difficult. Uh, when you're talking about, hey, only for 10 bucks you can just want Yeah, sure. Thanks, guys. See you later. Yeah. But if it's on the main network, first off, bar owners can just flip on that channel and, uh, you know, whatever was before and whatever's after. And the bulk of your primetime viewing crowd uh, on a Friday or a Saturday night will be looking at that. And that is advertisement that you cannot pay for. So, 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and hopefully with, you know, with the ESPN, the eventual plan is, and soon hopefully is to, to get some of these on the main network, you know, in prime well, yeah. time. Well, that's the other thing too. Yeah. Like it's just ESPN U it's kind of on a secondary channel for them. It's not that main ESPN. Yeah. 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 And hopefully by the championships and the playoffs and, that makes it on there at least this time around, and then maybe more as we move along. Um, I'm loving what TSN is doing, embracing this. Uh, it's such a different thing from the first time around, back around 2012 or 14 or whenever, whenever they did that first uh, TSN Go thing, and uh, you know, all the games wound up at uh, 11 o'clock at night and pushed across with NCAA Division Eight uh, hockey and things like that. So this time around, it's getting a fair shake. And uh, it really looks like it's catching on too, and the numbers are backing it up. So, some good news there. All right, <clears throat> to the weird stuff this week. OJLL, Nepean tried again to get into the OJLL as a junior A team. Uh, our second bid to join the OJLL was turned down at a recent in person league meeting. Nine teams voted in favor of our proposal, two teams voted against. Uh, under current rules, that is uh, enough to defeat the expansion bid. We thank the OJLL commissioner and deputy commissioner who both supported our bid. We also thank the nine OJLL teams that voted in favor and the Ontario referees who were also in favor of adding the PN to the Junior A League. Our proposal was solid with clear and sustainable financial and player resources. Our minor program is strong. Our Junior B team has been at the top of the league for years. The next logical and merited step should have been to create an opportunity for Nepean, Eastern Ontario, Western Quebec, and Indigenous players from the area to compete at home in the highest caliber junior lacrosse league in the province. But unfortunately, <clears throat> two teams here veto, have, have veto power to stop this progressive step to grow the sport of lacrosse. Peterborough and Kitchener voted down our proposal. That I didn't expect to see in there. Uh, this is discouraging news to share with players, fans, coaches, families, supporters, and others from the PN and across the, league, the lacrosse community. It is especially disappointing for the PN, Eastern Ontario, Western Quebec, and Indigenous players from the area who will continue to be denied opportunity to play Junior A at home. I didn't expect to call out the two teams. That is a shot across the bow if I've ever oh, seen one. I love it. I love it. Make them now force put some public pressure on those guys now. Yeah, if nine teams, if approach everyone's in favor except for those two teams, and make them accountable. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, I I would agree with it too. I mean, I, I guess a couple of questions I would have be you know not being from around the area, uh, geographically, uh, where is Nepean with respect to say Nepean is close to Ottawa, which is close to the Quebec border. So for somebody, I, I understand Kitchener's idea because that would probably be a four, four and a half hour drive for a game from Kitchener. Because okay. um, it's, it's, it's about two hours to Kitchener. It's, it's, probably, it's probably longer now because it's probably three and a half hours from where I am to Nepean, if not a little bit longer. And um, Kitchener is about an hour and a half to two hours away from me west. So that's a long okay. drive. Peterborough, on the other hand, is probably the closest team out of any of them. Um, that would uh, would be going there, but it would be an all day event, anyways, and an all night thing. I think that's that's the concern. But um, we're we're you know in this day and age, uh, I'm sure there's ways around it. Trains instead of buses, you know, something um, that, that could make it work. Um, sure, or even teachers. a neutral site or something like that. You know, you arrange some. Well, sort of their idea is that uh, they want to play at home, right, in the Pian. and there's enough players. Uh, indigenous and um, and others uh, from Quebec and from Ontario that uh, are already jettisoning across to other teams that uh, would make this up. And their their junior B team works very well, and they have good support. Steve Dietrich, Chugger, the uh, general manager of the Buffalo Bandits, uh, chimed in with this. Uh, again, same thing. It's baffling, especially with the number of players coming out of Nepean having to travel the distance that they do to be scattered around Ontario to play junior A lacrosse. It's baffling. So, you know, 
There's so, pros and cons, but I really don't see why why teams would have vetoed this one. If you work on the schedule, like yeah, if Nepean's is such a travel issue, just have back to back games or something. It's junior lacrosse anyways, have a back to back make a weekend of it. Like <laughs> wouldn't it be uh, more difficult for Nepean anyways to say if you have to do all this travel every single road game? Yeah. So if they're willing to do it, why wouldn't anybody else? Um anyways. That's for uh, people on a different pay grade than mine to figure out. But uh, anyways, the second time around, and it was the exact same result as the first time around with the same two teams um, vetoing it. So so in Peterborough's case, let me ask, do, do you think it's a matter of they think they're going to lose some local players to Nepean? That, or are they it's possible. That they think that they're going to lose some of their, their talent? It's very possible to the east. Yeah, it's very possible that that's that that is a, it's a good point. That's one that I actually didn't think about. But yes, being at the closest one to them, I would suggest that yes, that would be. I mean, very- is, is is Peterborough currently in their junior programs drawing talent from Quebec? Not generally. Most of them are local talent. Peterborough is mainly Peterborough. That's the beauty of that program. In, in and around the area of Peterborough, anyways. So Okay. And, and I assume Quebec has their own junior leagues. They do. That they're, they're pretty strong and stable. and. Yep. They do. Competitive. Um, it's, I don't think, I think Ontario is probably the strongest junior one right now. Um, sure. But Alberta's catching up, as we've seen. And so is BC. And BC is a very strong program. But everywhere in between, uh, these places need to be growing. And for us to, you know, we, it's one thing for us to talk about the NLL to be in all these different places, but without having the grassroots levels, you're not going to have the interest of the people. Really, how do you get a crowd? You aim to market to the kids. Because yeah. if you aim to an adult and say, hey, there's the party, you're going to get one, se- one, t- one seat sold, one ticket, maybe two. If you aim to the kids... Now you're going to get all the kids, all their parents, their uncles, their aunts, everything else. And as they go up, uh, you're also going to get that and more so. And they'll tell their friends and so on. Yeah, so and we're definitely seeing it in the Maritimes with Halifax happening. Yeah. I was going to say out west. So. Was well, Sean, you've west. experienced it firsthand. I mean, you look out west here, like the Saskatchewan SWAT have to play in an Alberta league. Uh, any players out of Winnipeg? usually play for the SWAT. They can't even play in their own province to play junior A. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, we're, we're missing something here. And we, we've talked about it. I've talked about it on the other show too with uh, with guests about how we're missing the boat on grassroots. Uh, maybe now that we have sixes as a, as a, as a tool as well, that this is going to help uh, build that as well. But um, we're missing that. We're, we're putting the money into club level and above. Um, junior C, Junior B, Junior A is getting a lot of that money. But below it isn't. And house leagues and things like that. For the kid who wants to play because he loves the game and isn't looking to be an NLL player, but just loves the game, there needs to be. You know, we had this, you know, in the 70s in hockey, you know, where all these things were popping up. Well, we need to do this with lacrosse now. We're at that stage now where we need to have this because we need to watch these kids grow into these roles. And who knows? Who knows what superstar you're going to find? Who knows what Gretzky is going to be out there in lacrosse? Who knows what Gary Gates is going to be out there? Just because they found something they loved and just did it at their own leisure and found that they were good and then wanted to have these other things and didn't have to travel 12 hours to get to a game. And unfortunately, and you're seeing it, Gary, in, out in Ontario, politics, a lot of that gets in the way. Yeah, there's how many how many great ideas have been shot down because of political nonsense. We talked about it last week with Scott Godfrey, just with, with um, disabled or disabilities um, and trying to get programs running. So, you know, if they're having a hard time, gosh, you know, that would be a first off no matter what on my thing of, yes, Tick that box, get that get money flowing over there. So, I don't know. This is probably why I'm not in politics. <clears throat> I like looking at myself every now, every now and again. 
others may have other things to say with yeah. Anyways, it is still Native uh, Native American Heritage Month. And of course, this time around, uh, Larson Sundown. I take a lot of pride in representing the Haudenosaunee. For myself, it is about playing for my community, the surrounding nations, and all Indian country. We're so fortunate to have support from so many other nations wherever we travel. It's a tremendous honor to represent other Indigenous communities across Turtle Island. Indigenous Peoples Month. Um, well said. Very eloquently yeah. put. Now, that leads me into, uh, into this. Uh, a good friend of mine from the Netherlands, and uh, we had a chance to hook up in Prague, uh, Artie Sessler. He put together a, a beautiful documentary depicting the uh, reason Box Lacrosse is the medicine game. The journey is inspired by the enchanting world of Box Lacrosse where R2 and his Haudenosaunee brother Neil Paulus are serving as the coaching staff for the Dutch national team, rekindling the 400-year-old friendship through this sport with deep Indigenous roots. This endeavor reveals the cultural richness, richness of tradition, honor, and unity. I have a clip from the documentary, and I will put up the uh, the website to catch it. It is spectacular. Uh, I even have a cameo in there in uh, chapter nineteen, around the ten minute mark. But this is the uh, this is the uh, two minute little. Uh, little we shall know each other as brothers. A vlogumentary about the forgotten history of the two row wampum. Step into the world of Dutch filmmaker Artu Sesselaar as he embarks on an electrifying documentary project, unearthing the riveting historical ties between the Haudenosaunee, formerly known as the Iroquois, and the Dutch in the two-row wampum, a covenant of peace made over 400 years ago when the Dutch first set foot on Turtle Island, now America, playing a significant role in the birth of New Amsterdam, later becoming New York. 2024 marks the 400th anniversary of this historic event, celebrated in New York. The journey is inspired by the enchanting world of box lacrosse, where Art II and his Haudenosaunee brother, Neil Paulus, are serving as the coaching staff for the Dutch national team, rekindling the 400-year-old friendship through this sport with deep indigenous roots. This endeavor reveals the cultural richness of tradition, honor, and unity. Follow Art II and his brother Neil, along with many others, as they unveil the story of history, humanity, countless coincidences, unexpected twists, and transformative encounters unfolding before your eyes, all while connecting the past and the present. This is an innovative fusion of vlogging and documentary, a testament to the power of shared passions and the magic of sports to transcend cultural boundaries. Where this vlogmentary will ultimately lead is an exciting mystery. Art 2 follows the winding path that the story itself reveals and is eager to take you on a transformative adventure like no other. It's called a smoke dance. Well, they call it war dance. Are, um, are for thunder, too, when they call it thunder. Don't call it out. Yeah. It's already <laughs> raining. Oh, yeah. We don't want thunder coming out of Absolutely. The uh, website is down there, uh, www.tourow.nl, um, to, uh, to give a look to it. Uh, you can find it on our page on All Across All the Time on Facebook, as well as I had shared it across global uh, lacrosse history, past, present, and future, and a few other spots as well. I believe it's also on my personal Facebook page, too, if you want to take a look. Now, um, how can you help? <clears throat> You can donate. Every contribution, big or small, brings us one step closer to uncover, uh, uncovering this captivating history. Your donation ensures that this incredible story is told with the depth and authenticity it deserves. Number two, you can spread the word. Share our project with your friends, family, and community. Together, we can create a ripple effect in awareness and support. Why support? We shall know each other's brothers. R2, the creator of this endeavor, currently operates without any project funding. Uh, delve into the concealed layers of his history uh, and culture that bind two nations. Witness a groundbreaking fusion of vlogging and documentary, a unique experience. Advocate for unity and comprehension in a world marked by division. This is more than just a call to action. It's an opportunity to be part of something truly extraordinary. Let's come together to make this documentary project a reality and share this incredible story with the world. 
Donate now and become a vital part of We Shall Know Each Other as Brothers. Let's embark on this transformation adventure together. Again, I will put up the website. And uh, at the bottom of all the chapters, uh, if you care to donate, is a little spot to click on. And you can donate whatever you feel like. Five bucks, ten bucks, five hundred bucks, whatever, whatever suits you. Uh, everything is appreciated. And it is going to a good cause. I know R2 very well. I'm in contact with him quite a bit. And uh, he is dead on and he is right with this project. Uh, this isn't wasting your money. This is a great project and he is a terrific uh, filmographer. <clears throat> and uh, with Neil Paulus, uh, I sat one night in Prague and listened to Neil's stories. And before he knew it, it was three in the morning. And I was still listening to Neil's stories. They were spectacular and riveting. So um, definitely, um, definitely uh, worth worth your time to watch and worth your time if you and money if you have to donate. Thanks, Brian. Thank you for being with us. Turn it in. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, it's just, a, it really is a great thing. I saw a lot of footage in there with uh, talking about the Rubeski tournament. And, of course, the third coach of that Netherlands team is Hall of Famer Wayne Cauley of the Brooklyn Redmen fame, who has been a who was a Hall of Fame goalie as well as a, a, a coach and GM for many, many years with them. And uh, Wayne is out there continuously with the Netherlands, helping to grow that program. And uh, I look forward to seeing everybody when we all get back to Prague in April for the uh, next Robeski tournament. So it'll be great to meet up and uh, have a couple of, a uh, couple of ales, a couple of those, uh, those Prague ales, as we had heard so much about uh, with our two and uh, discussing this a little bit more. Um, it's fantastic. And uh, the stuff that I watched on that, I was riveted. Um, and unfortunately I couldn't watch from start to finish. I had to watch it in sections and do things, but uh, it is spectacular. And the storytelling in it is just immense. So, please let's uh, let's uh, give some support to to R two and his project. And um, looking forward to seeing what more can be done with that. All right, over to World Lacrosse, Michelle Boyer, and we've had her on the show talking about some of the trials and tribulations of equity in sport. And uh, she uh, brought up a couple of uh, <coughs> excuse me, a couple of things that we were. Uh, talking about um, with World Lacrosse, um, and they're going to be, they already have 15 teams that have uh, put forth uh, their interest to play in the Worlds uh, over in Utica in 2024. Um, but World Lacrosse will be deciding in the next few days which teams they will cut. At last count, there were 15 uh, women's teams hoping to compete. If they use their arbitrary number of only allowing eight women's teams, uh, but up to 30 men teams, they'll have effectively eliminated half of the women's teams wanting to come. Now, I don't know about you guys, but something seems off to me in this. That makes no sense. It makes none whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, my, my first thought is, um, why not see if you can find one more team and then have a field of 16? Again, it, um, if, their, if their arbitrary number is eight, it wouldn't matter if they had 16, 12, or any other denomination that worked divisibly. Um, that's just the number that they want. Um, I don't understand why we're putting our thumb on a s part of the sport that is growing like wildfire. Um, to me, uh, it's a no-brainer that if you can get both sides of it going, um, as, a, uh, as a team owner, if I get both sides growing, that means more money on both sides of it, which means I make more money. As a sport, that means that we have people from both genders coming in and eating it up, which means we have more eyes and more viewership. And isn't that what we're in the middle of trying to do? Get as many eyes and viewership as humanly possible. We're allowing them in the world. So why not give it full bore? Why put these you know, thumbs and limits yeah. on things that you don't have to? Yeah, especially, I mean, it's World Lacrosse is the sanctioning and governing body putting on the tournament. Why are they holding themselves to hostage to a number that they may have decided on 
three long four years ago. And if you're getting, if you need to cut down on teams, why don't you do it on both sides? Why have thirty on men and then cut half of the women's teams? Especially since the teams that you would be cutting on the men's sides were teams that really aren't box lacrosse teams. They may be decent in field, may not even have an indoor place to play box. Um, so I am uh, I'm curious about how that works. Also. Hello, Eduardo. Great to hear from you. Hey, Eduardo. Hey, Eduardo. Eduardo is swimming out there in Jacksonville right oh, now. Bad <laughs> rainstorm is down there. Always something going on, Eduardo. There's nothing boring in your life, sir. You know, my world traveler over there in Jacksonville who uh, is all over the place. He is uh, jettisoning every time we see him. And uh, now he's got his uh, his raft out, just in case. <laughs> But just before we move any further, I just want to remind everybody this part of the show is brought to you by Sherry's Ticket Tip. All right, guys, it's time to talk about Sherry's Tickets. Sherry'sTickets.com is easy to use and has no hidden fees. The price you see is the price you pay. Pay less and play more with Sherry'sTickets.com. Save even more by using the exclusive promo code EOP10. That's EOP10. Do not pay hidden fees and save 10%. Why use any other ticket reseller and get those hard to come by tickets to the big game? If you need a more personal touch, give them a call at 610-494-5050. That's 610-494-5050. Sherry'sTickets.com also has great theater and concert tickets that are hard to get your hands on. Remember, do not overpay and save with the best at Sherry'sTickets.com. Save 10% using the promo code EOP10. That's EOP10. You'll thank us later. Sherry'sTickets.com. Absolutely, and lots of reasons to get it. The Eagles are looking great. Uh, they got a big game with KC tomorrow. So, of course, in future edition. <laughs> fly, Eagles, fly. Worked so far, guys. <laughs> there was that one time, you know. What? Anyways, <laughs> Patrick's with us. Patrick, what's happening, man? Pat. Oh, 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 come, come on. on. Here we go, on, Patrick. Here we go. Guy backstops a back team oh, that hey. didn't make the playoffs hey. last year to a man cup final and yeah. want to get rid of him. Come on. W L E F T. Come on. Starter. Rest. Deacon Nod is your backup and. Higgins is your starter. That is the way it is. Embrace it. <laughs> I'm telling him when I see him next week. <laughs> Watch out. <man. laughs> Don't forget, Philadelphia is in Toronto next week for preseason game. They were here this past weekend uh, with the Buffalo Bandits on the other rink um, with practices galore. So they're all working really hard. Remember, it's two weeks to opening weekend, guys. Uh -huh. it's that and, I think, you know, and I think some <clears throat> training camps are already wrapped up and maybe not. Uh, we got one more game next, next week. Rush has the yeah, other rush of the preseason game. Yeah. And we shot next week. Yeah, but fever is rampant now. Yep. Fever is rampant. We're seeing this on more and more people. It's there. People are chomping at the bit. I thought I saw on Las Vegas's page that, that they were done. So. Well, know. they played today or uh, yesterday, today, yesterday, I think. But uh, we'll get to that in a, in a few minutes. Um, PLL, guys. PLL announced their cities finally. And they also teamed up with Whirlpool Brand to announce these said teams. Mike, what are these teams? Oh, jeez. Here we go. <laughs> 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 You got the Boston Cannons, you have the New York Atlas, the Philadelphia Water Dogs, the Maryland Whip Snakes, the Carolina Chaos, the Denver Outlaws, formerly Chrome, the Utah Archers, and the California Redwoods. Now, of course, um, beginning in the 2024 season, the PLL will adopt a two conference structure the New York Atlas, Boston Cannons, Philadelphia Water Dogs, and Maryland Whip Snakes will be the Eastern Conference, the Utah Archers, Carolina Chaos, Denver Outlaws, formerly Chrome, <laughs> and the California <laughs> will make up the Western Conference with the PLL All-Star Game to feature a conference-based matchup for the first time and a new conference player stru playoff structure soon to be announced. Now, 
with the 10 game regular season, eight of those 10 games are going to be in the home of these teams. Now, if it is your home, say we have a game in Boston, the Boston Cannons will play two games that weekend. And they will work an awful lot with youth programs and other developmental programs to continue along with what we're talking about, grassroots. See, the PLL gets this, guys. Ray Balloon, his brother, and the rest of the guys in the office there, <clears throat> they get this and where the efforts need to go. According to Paul Rabel, our eight lacrosse clubs are coming home. Uh, this is the biggest moment in our league's history. We couldn't be more excited about the incredible growth and enthusiasm we're witnessing in these vibrant lacrosse communities. Big thank you to our players, investors, partners, and colleagues for their continued commitment, belief, and work ethic in making this possible. Sports fans have professional lacrosse from the world's best players to look forward to in their hometowns next season. In the first five seasons, the PLL operated a touring model where teams did not have geographic affiliations, and all eight teams played in one market each game uh, weekend. This league, uh, the league, will continue to operate a 14-week tour-based season with eight of the league's 10 regular season uh, weekends to be held in teams' home markets. Two regular season weekends will be held in other markets with the All-Star Game, Playoffs, and Championship to be held at neutral locations to be announced in 2024. So there's still an opportunity to see it in your place uh, if you're not one of these cities called. But now uh, people can start putting more of a uh, uh, fandom. Is that the word I'm looking for? Behind some of these teams. Thoughts? Sean? Uh, oh, sorry, Mike. Yeah. No, 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 no. Let Sean go first. <laughs> I got no, some um, take, but let Sean go first. All right. Yeah, no, I think Eric makes some good points. Um, I guess uh, I'll, I'll call it the obvious. There's no Midwest teams. I know that was kind of brought up quite a bit. Um, so hopefully they have some of those neutral site games in that area. But, uh, and yeah, I'm sure some uh, upset Chrome fans who uh, bought a lot of merchandise that are <laughs> obsolete now. Well, you know, they went with this, uh, this MLL uh, theme, right, trying to bring back a little bit of that yeah. connection obviously with the Boston Cannons and the Denver Outlaws. Um, who uh, was expecting the, um, I don't know, the Western New York chaos? To me, instead of the New York Atlas. But uh, yeah. yeah, I think a lot, a lot of people seem to seem to think that. So, um, you know, there were certainly a lot of folks out in Minnesota who thought they should be getting the water dogs. Um mm -hmm. You know, uh, obviously, if you're a Philly fan, uh, it, it definitely, it definitely lucked out. You know, you've got the uh, the 2022 champ and 2023 finalist mm -hmm. uh, in your backyard now. So, um, you know, the only downside for them will be, you know, the championship game won't be at Subaru Park like it's been the last couple of years, but. Which is time for a change anyways, I think, you know, uh, time to spread it around a little bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely get it out to, to other markets. But, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I Still mean, I'm, I, that I, Canadian I, team, you know, that, that, that would that would definitely be nice. Um, and, you know, the, the Chrome thing, uh, I guess the reason I'm a little more bothered by it, you know, is not so much because I seem to grow into the Chrome correspondent for the group here, but <laughs> despite not necessarily being a fan of them, but uh, you know, if, if the league already had the rights to the, to the Denver outlaws name after absorbing major league lacrosse, why not make that an expansion team and keep the Chrome and put them somewhere else? Like you've been, you know, you've been marketing Chrome for four years now, along with right. everyone else. Now you're just going to drop the name and pretty much alienate one eighth of your fan base. Right. Who's to say if you're a Chrome fan that you're just suddenly going to become a Denver Outlaws fan? Very true. Very yeah. true. As, as for you, though, Mike, I hear Denver's very nice in the summer. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be ordering my Chrome hat anyway. 
<laughs> gotta have, gotta, have, gotta have something before it becomes obsolete, I guess. <laughs> it will be a collector's item. Yep. So just think how hard I have to look for an Ontario Raiders jersey that I can't hey, find anymore. I'm wearing a Edmonton Rush shirt right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. And the other thing is he's wearing the old logo. There's no bison yeah. anything in that. No bison. A lot of bull, but no bison. <laughs> Rowdy, well, uh, you're a knock rowdy. Your door. It could be horny at your door. It could be a horny or rowdy, yeah. So, like a, right now, it's just a bulldog, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, next week is your game, isn't it, Sean? It is. Yeah. Twenty fifth this weekend is the uh, preseason that's game be of the Yeah. There's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of to do. I'm sure that's a full day of events. Oh yeah, it's gonna be fun. You know, it's funny because this preseason game. And I'm, I'm sure there's more hoopla than half the teams in the league for a regular season game. Think and why? Because they put it in their new market. Yep. Why not? And yeah. it's working. And a market that will eat it up. Yeah. So you've done your homework. And you're putting a team there as a test bait. And you're going to see success. And you know what? I'm going to be a spoiler here. I know at halftime, the uh, minor Moose Lacrosse kids are playing. And I bet you this is a highlight for their year. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think about the... um, Well, I think about when we were talking about Montreal, um, when Chad Fairfowl was part of the the group that would put the exhibition games between Toronto and Rochester in the Bell Centre. And they actually took a couple of uh, junior players, uh, I believe one from Quebec and one from uh, from Ontario, and put them on either of the teams and well what a boost it was to their career and to their morale to me that's a you know ingenuity of thinking grassroots thing for even sorry going back to the montreal thing again but even just pick out a few classrooms and give them tickets to the game absolutely absolutely it's that simple (laughs) like yeah okay you're gonna lose money because you're giving away free tickets sure but you're getting new eyes and that grassroots, they'll just watch the game. Maybe a kid sees that and says, Hey, I want to give that a try now, right? Or reduce tickets for students or something, yeah. you know, just to get it into the schools. <clears throat> get eyes on this thing live. It's one thing to watch it on television. And, you know, I love, you know, catching it whenever I can catch it, wherever I can catch it. But nothing beats the live experience. Oh, the atmosphere is bef- bar none. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Especially if you catch a full barn. The track last night was rocking. It was full. And, you know, you caught a 14-13 overtime game. Did you get all the players in there? No. It's preseason. But did it matter? No. Did everybody have a great time? Yes. Oh, yeah. Moose Jaw, I can guarantee they're going to have about 5,000 in a Mm -hmm. 5,000 rink. It's going to be deafening in there. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think awesome. I think that the leagues are finally on to something here. You know, the unbox thing is great. What the PLL is doing is terrific. Oh, don't get me wrong. I love their 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 you know circus comes to town idea because of this. Um, they didn't have to go and rent out. The only do is rent out a stadium for a weekend. That's easy to get that date. If you have to rent out that stadium for eight or ten weeks, that's a little more difficult to do times eight cities so if you only need one stadium that you're going to use saturday and sunday well hey i'm pretty sure that there's somewhere you can do it and move your thing along around here it was a brilliant idea and now to do this and you know yes it's a little more um tied to the community but it's still the traveling circus idea only thing is that your team gets one of those dates so now there's a tie to it so now there's more interest in it, even though you're still going all over the place and doing what you were doing before. It's ingenious. Yeah, now, yeah double, that, that, the double header would be nice too. So yeah, because I felt that was the only downfall of the kind of the traveling circus. It was hard to really latch yourself to a team that really didn't have a physical mm-hmm. location to it. Now it's completely <laughs> changed, right? It's possible. It's possible, but they're all US based teams and us as Canadians, yeah. we're not gonna latch onto it anyways. So yeah. you're latching on just to a team that you you like. I I happen to latch on to Atlas, you know. So you know, it's a uh, 
It's given me a lot of pain over the last few years. But, uh, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> No, but the other thing with that double header too is, you know, obviously if it's if it's in your city and you're supporting your team, uh, you know, you you might be tempted to 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 go both days. Yeah, to get you know, whether it's Friday, out. Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. if they previously come to your city and they weren't tied to a city, you might just okay, hey, I only want to see the games on one of the days. And I'm not going to go. I would even be, you know, I know this is a far fetched idea and it's not going to happen. But uh, if we would do different cities the next year and then do the same thing, you mean untie the franchises and tie them to different cities next year? Yeah. Yeah. Tie somebody else, some other fan base in there for a year and then tie another fan base in there for a year. That way, everybody has a chance. That'd to have be a nice, game. but uh, I'm sure they probably. In a perfect would, world, it would yeah. work. I don't yeah, think well, I'm sure that, but I'm sure they probably went through quite a rigmarole just to get everything rebranded. It's like you know, okay, you got whatever uh, uh, whip sticks, you know, gear that doesn't say Maryland. You know, mm-hmm. now you go and get Maryland yeah. whip snakes gear. And it ends up being good for one year. And then suddenly it's, you know, the Florida whip snakes. And it's like, well, what, what do I do with my Maryland whip snakes? Gear? <laughs> and there's two sides to that go too, but because it, it generates you making them want to buy new merchandise each year. It's okay. Now I got to get the Maryland one. Now I got to get the New York one. Well, all the people over in Florida are now going to be buying jerseys that they weren't going to be buying before. The people of Maryland already got them. Just a thought. True. <laughs> All righty. Let's move on, guys. Um, NLL. We're uh, we're close. We are. We're, we're at the midway point of preseason. <laughs> really? Yes. Match it up. Right? <laughs> Remember? Fever. <laughs> <laughs> we had a couple of a uh, couple of cuts and a couple of signings. Uh, the signing I had was a uh, New York Riptide signed Matt Bennett to a one year. Uh, contract, but they also cut a couple of people. Uh, well, they signed Matt Bennett, but they released Joey Zabo and Justin Bragg. And Justin Bragg is a friend of mine. He's he was also on the Prague trip, and uh, I'm sorry to see he didn't make it with the Riptide um, in full stride. Though he is with the Peterborough Timberman of the ALL, waiting for his next opportunity. Um, he'll make it. <laughs> he is a hell of a worker. He is a hell of a team player. He is a hell of a person. And I think that uh, the league needs more people like him in there. Guys like him, guys like Bryce Tolmey, these are guys that should be in the league, deserve to be in the league, work hard enough, and are good enough. And through one reason or another, aren't. And, uh, again, another reason for expansion. But uh, these guys need to find homes. Tolmey played great last night in uh, uh, the Colorado-Toronto game. He wasn't sure if he was able to hold on with that that lineup and that roster, so we'll see. But uh, so far, he's uh, he's made it this far through camp, so and he's holding his own. It looks good out there. Um, Rush had a few cuts, eh, Sean? Yeah, um, yeah. Hawks, um, Marshall, and Prosik. Um, not too many surprises, I guess. Maybe the Hawks and Prosik a little bit, but. Uh, Again, kind of late round draft picks, kind of bodies at camp. Well, you know, um, there's still a lot of things to go on in that that rush camp, and I think this weekend yeah. will be a a big telltale. Um, the say the Rock and Philadelphia are playing each other. I'm sure there's a few more games going to be at track. New York seems to be taking a lot of games there as well. Albany as well. Uh, Rochester's uh, been in and around the area um, between there and also the ILA in Six Nations. Halifax has been setting up their camp there. So still a lot of things going on. Uh, a couple of goals that were uh, that caught my attention um, in preseason. One was um, the Vancouver Warriors against the uh, Vegas Desert Dogs. And this is a, a beauty from Dean Farrell off on Adam, Adam Sherlin Beatty's uh, pass. That just looks crazy, doesn't it? Just such a beautiful flip perfectly into his moving stick. 
You know, that's that's just awesome. Keeping in that same idea, we had a Jeff <clears throat> a Jeff T pass to Tyler Davis for this little ditty. Wasn't that just nasty? Wasn't that just nasty? Yeah. And that clip, of course, was a courtesy of the uh, New York Riptide, and the other one was a courtesy of uh, Panther City, believe it or not. And um, this one is courtesy of the Toronto Rock. This was the overtime winner last night in the uh, Colorado Toronto game. <laughs> Josh Dalwick is becoming quite the sniper from there. That was his fifth goal of the night. So, He's gonna push some um, veterans. Yeah, some of the um, some of the players, notably that weren't in there. Milligan wasn't in there. Tom Schreiber wasn't in there. A number of players weren't weren't in there. Corey Small wasn't playing. Um, Colorado, of course, didn't have Dylan Ward in net, but they did have a pretty good, substantial part of their team. Connor Robinson was playing. You know, all the guys that, uh, that do normally do the scoring were in there, with the exception, of course, of the accountant, <laughs> Ryan Lee. <laughs> he looks like an accountant, doesn't look like a lacrosse player. That's what people were telling me. <laughs> but, uh, hey, you know, um, with uh, The Rock missing those guys and having this. Now, of course, Mark Matthews was playing. He looked good. Chris Bushy would look good uh, again. Um there's some real chemistry out there. This is a very fast team. Um, they had a little bit of a brain cramp in the last couple of minutes of the game because they were up 13 to 10 with about three and a half, four minutes to go, and we went to overtime. So uh, we had a few defensive breakdowns, but then again, all the defensive guys weren't all there. So, But, you know, that being said, uh, all in all, it was an exciting game for a preseason game. A lot of energy in that building. Track, they filled it. They filled it last week. They filled it this week. I am sure they will fill, the, fill it up next week. Looking forward to seeing uh, uh, a bunch of friends from that team. Anthony Garcelle, Zach Higgins. Uh, looking, <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to seeing the Katoni brothers, you know, as well as the uh, the rock players as well, you know. So it should be an exciting, exciting time. But uh, uh, just a few scores from this weekend's preseason games. Vancouver beat Vegas 13-9. The New York Riptide came back and beat Albany 12-7. Rochester slid by Georgia 10-9. We talked about the Toronto 14-13 overtime win. And Halifax uh, over in the ILA beat uh, Panther City 14-10. Philly and Buffalo were both at the track um, doing practices throughout the weekend. And things are moving forward. All right, guys, here comes our big questions. You're going to love this, guys. <laughs> Who do we see in the finals? Is it too premature? Uh, that's it. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, we'll start with uh, Sean first. Then. I have a hard time seeing the Toronto not being in the finals. <laughs> um Oh, after that, holy cow. So I could see Buffalo, possibly San Diego, but. There's so many, so many yeah. close teams right now that, you know, it's, it's, it comes down to injuries, doesn't it? <laughs> of who can stay healthy the longest. And with this new alignment of the top eight, make it. Uh, all bets are off, right? Any of that, who has the depth? Like, if, if you're going to go through injuries, can you survive them? Like, uh, mm -hmm. and I really think those are kind of your top three is Toronto, Buffalo, San Diego. But, uh, God, it could be anybody's, <laughs> yeah. anybody's game. I like what Rochester's done, too. I think that they're strong, too. But you know what? Colorado has to be in on that equation, too. They've been to the finals the last two years, won one. Yeah. Colorado's Thanks. a weird team, though, because, uh, yeah, because they always seem to kind of teeter in the regular season, but then just once the postseason hits, they just turn the switch on. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, Mike, I got an easier question for you. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I'll answer that one. Okay. Um, okay. I'll, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to go. Give it some thought. Uh, I, I could see a Philly Calgary final. Hmm. Interesting. Realistically. Yeah. Let me just get that. To... <laughs> you, you write that down, and, and and you know what? I'll give I'll give you my re. I won't give you my reasoning for Philly, but I'll give you my reasoning for Calgary. Um, mm-hmm. it's the five year cycle. They won okay. in 09. Yeah, they yeah. Made yeah. the finals in fourteen yeah. and were a mini game away from winning in fourteen. They won in nineteen. Here we are, five years later. Oh, you missed on two thousand and four. They were there too. That's right. So oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, five-year cycle. Five-year cycle. Where they also have a good enough team, and they have Del Bianco, and that, that never hurts. Yeah, yep. they have it's a very easy, strong it's team. It's not, for, it's uh, not I think ourselves, it's... you know, uh, Cook and uh, Hogarth. There's some great moves that uh, Sanderson pulled off since he's taken over. Um, let's not forget about yeah, King. They're gonna, yeah, they're going to have yeah. a hugely physical offense. Yep. Yeah, yeah. 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 Every even, even King and a quick, quick over. back end. Yeah, oh, transition game. Guys transition too. game is second to none, really. I think they had probably the best transition game last year, and uh, I don't think it's uh, any worse off this year. And, and again, think, you know, with 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 San Diego being as good as they are, and Colorado, obviously, you know, two straight finals, one championship. Um, it's easy to forget Colorado set a record, a franchise mm-hmm. record for victories in the regular season last year. Yeah. So. Uh, no reason they couldn't do that again. So they're going to definitely have com- tough competition. So, mm-hmm. I uh, personally, you know, I like Sean's idea with Toronto. I'm still not convinced. Not 100% convinced on the Rock. I, uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> I like, you know, San Diego is, is one. But again, you know, I still am not 100% convinced there either. Because they showed me where the the kryptonite can can go in there. Yeah, I you know, agree with you. I, I think there's definitely question mark and goal in San Diego. That's going to be their downfall. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I haven't uh, knighted him a deity yet, and uh, Rigliari is good, but I think he's still. That's why they have pool in there because they need that little extra bit of coaching and that stable veteran pro officer, right? So. Yeah, and, and uh, I would say, I would say there's the same concern in San Diego as there would be in Buffalo, and maybe even Toronto. You could say is mm-hmm. you know they're all aging a bit. Yeah. So you know the potential for injury obviously is <laughs> you never know. So I uh, myself am going with Halifax. To tell you the truth, because I know that they have geared everything towards this, everything. Uh, this is happy. this is the uh, this is the telltale. Otherwise, they have to blow it up and try and start again and yeah. try and win it. And, and, yeah. and honestly, that's that's, that's, that's the other yeah. that's the other one. I you know I between Philly and Halifax, and mm-hmm. you know obviously the other one that I thought about was Georgia. Just and in Philly, the still their defense. It, so I'm not it, sold it, on it yet. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not. But I think that um, with Georgia, I think it's. Um, they just need to not have the slow start like they had last year. Well, see, now you got into my second thing too, right? And that's uh, <laughs> Halifax, Georgia, right? But um, and again, with Dobson in net, and he's proven now. You know, last year, okay, rookie, whatever. Um, you take a look at what he's done since rookie, and uh, well, he led them to a, an unprecedented comeback uh, in the league. Uh, he led Canada to almost a gold medal in the world. He led the Archers to a, a championship in the PLL. Um, I, I think that uh, this 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 kid is real, um, and just, as for the rest be, of the team, the you're going to put four Thompsons together. Uh-huh. Yeah. That too. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> let alone all the other no, little, little tidbits that you have, the Brian Coles, and you know, uh, let's let's not forget our our former MVP, you know, our Shane Jacksons, and all the other things that go along with it. Um, that's a hell of a team. Ryan Lanchbury, Andrew Q. It can go on and on and on. That's a scary team. Well, I hope they open up. I hope they open up their their first game doing that. 
put all four Thompsons and Jackson on the floor. That'd Wouldn't agree. that be awesome? Yeah. yeah. Just, I just, I want to see that 30 seconds. Yeah. Just, <laughs> no, just yeah. A yeah. Of that. yeah. I'd love to Heck see that. Yeah. But yeah. Hopefully that's, someone's that's listening. Fine. And you know, it can happen now <laughs> because we don't have divisions, right? Right. Because, you know, the NLL is sitting there hoping it's not Vancouver and San Diego where every game is at 10 o'clock at night. And you lose the entire mid yeah. and east coast. Or you lose the entire west coast because you're going to have games at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So, interestingly enough, how that's going to work. So, but uh, I guess they'll uh, they'll come across that point uh, when they come across that. Now, Sean, you had mentioned before off air about those couple of little things from the NLL. Um, the top goalies and the top transition yeah. players. And a little bit of controversy in there. Now, the number one goalie is Kristen Del Bianco. Yeah, I can I can live with that. Yeah. Some of the others in that list, though, are... I don't know. What are your thoughts, Mike? Uh, I think I'm generally in agreement with the, the top three that they had. Mm -hmm. And and they're probably all interchangeable. Uh, I still think that you know, with Matt Vince winning another championship and being goaltender eight eight times goaltender of the year, um, he's earned that first spot. You know, he's still there. Last year, he set a record: thirteen to four is a record in the finals. Yeah, and he honestly, if you want to go statistically, I mean, usually Del Bianco is middle of the pack, statistically speaking. Um, the, the one mission that I told you, I guess, off the air two year is um, Rose. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a glaring mission in that list. Well, yeah, he doesn't near get the respect he deserves. Like, yes, he did take a, a beating in the uh, in the Buffalo playoff series there, but the whole team took a beating in that series. Because the defense that were the tightest in the league all year uh, needed to buy tickets if they wanted to be spectators. And watching the uh, the beautiful flying power of Josh Byrne as he's sailing on Bayou um, or going east-west instead of north-south on Rose, who is an angle goalie. And when you got to get him to move all over the place, well, then things become a little bit uh, a little bit dicey. So you have to block these lanes and block and get physical. So do I blame Rose for these things? No. And for the last two years especially, uh, Rose has had the best statistics from any goalie in the NLL, period. So, you know, um, am I a bit homerish biased? Maybe, but the number speaks for themselves. Well, I agree. And again, we're going back statistically. Like I said, if you want to talk statistics, Del Bianco is actually middle of the pack. Rose should be a bit ahead of that, mm -hmm. statistically speaking. Well, you have you have Aaron Bold on that top five list, and um, from all his years and uh, a couple of championships, yes, I, I agree he's she's in the conversation, but maybe not top five. No, I think all with I all due more. respect, Aaron, great guy. Um, yeah, he's not the same goal. Total professional, was. total worth it, work ethic. Love to have him yeah, on my team. Absolutely, like to have yeah. a coach on my team. But is he the same goaltender he was in, say, 2015-2016? I can't see that one, no. Yeah. Because, yeah, but, we were talking 2015-2016. Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely, he'd probably be in that list. But uh, I, uh, I, I, I I, hedge back to the to Halifax Toronto playoff series. Uh, Mike likes to bring that up on me. Um, with that tenth of a second more, and, uh, and Toronto gets to watch the next round. But uh, the Halifax was losing by a ton. In comes Bold and shuts the door. Otherwise, that thing would have been over uh, in the third by uh, just an absolute onslaught. And, uh, you know, his his playing was, oh, yeah. hands down, the best I'd seen him play in years. Oh, yeah, and I don't want to knock Aaron in any way. He's still a very, very good goaltender by all yeah. means. But, yeah, taking a look at who's in the league and who's there, yeah, the top five I don't think is is it. All right, let's jump over to the transition, guys. Challen Rogers is number one. <clears throat> I love Challen Rogers. I love his game. I love the way he plays. 
He can be as tough as you want. He can be as finesseful as you want. He can come out of both doors. He can do transition. Him, But you know what? I think Ian McKay deserves it more than him. And Ian I mean, McKay is bona fide. He'll play goal if he had to. I'm sure Challen would too. But just um, from what I've seen, McKay has done it. And you take a look at last season, if, if anything, that McKay had to be everywhere for that banded team to win. And he did whatever JT asked him to do, whatever either coach asked him to do, he was there. And How is that career it. not number one? Yeah, there you go again. Uh -huh. no, I mean, yeah, he no, is no. the best in the yeah. league, right? And then we saw what? No, I didn't see Joey Capito. I mean, probably one of the fastest guys in the league. Yeah, but Capito was uh, coming no, off. He, he, he was injured. injured so. Yeah, he was injured too. True. And um, I don't know, maybe bias here too, but I saw a lot of talk about no Mike Messenger on that list. Yeah, that's another one. But Capito, to go back to that, he didn't even play summer ball, right? He was coaching. Yeah, that's Calvary a good point. Of the yeah. Six Nation Chiefs. So we still have to wait to see how that uh, how that Comes hurt back. him or yeah. how his recovery came if he's 100%. Or is he the old Capito? So we'll, uh, we'll see that this year. That's another thing I didn't see yesterday was there's, there's obviously no Capito in the lineup. And that could be interesting. Then, yeah, there means, was a big yeah. Paul Dawson in the Colorado lineup. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, weird to I mean, see the, Paul and not Dan. That that was another weird one. The the other, I guess, the other couple of guys for transition that I'd mention are um, Reed Bowering and Josh Medeiros. Medeiros, so, yeah, yeah. So I I think he's I think Medeiros is going to be a big part of part of Panther city. I, for, I honestly, I think Maderos and Liam Patton, you know, really make that Panther city transition go mm -hmm. more than anyone, but, uh, but definitely uh bowering, you know, and, and I know you mentioned Ian McKay and, you know, obviously, you know, phenomenal job. And, uh, you know, does the Swiss army knife thing, just like courier, uh, uh, I almost feel like it's going to be unfair to him. He, I feel like he's going to be like one of those guys, kind of like um, Steve Priolo, where it's like he's right. in the conversation every year for defenseman of the year and just can't seem to win it. Or like Nick Rose, you know, in the conversation for goaltender, I think just can't do it. Ian McKay is going to be in the conversation yeah. every single year. You know, for transition player of the year, and because of Zach Courier and Challen Rogers and Reed Bowering, never gets just, over. The yeah, he's just never. Yeah. But of course, hey, you know, you ask any of these guys, and they'll they'll always trade that award for right. <laughs> for a cup instead. So, sure. all right, just before we uh, we move on to our last little bit here, I just want to remind everybody that uh, this part of the program is brought to you by Philly Sports Trips. All right, guys, if you're a Philly sports fan and you want to travel with your favorite team, then travel with the best. Go to phillysportstrips.com. They have self-travel packages and full travel packages available with round-trip flights from the Philadelphia airport. Packages include direct flights, four-night stays, all-inclusive tailgate parties, lower-level group tickets, Whatever you want, you got it with phillysportstrips.com. If you want to travel to an upcoming Phillies game, make sure you check out Philly Sports Trips. And do not forget, Philly Sports Trips has all the away trips for the Eagles' upcoming 2023 season. Jump on it now because you do not want to lose out on all these great opportunities. Go to phillysportstrips.com. Absolutely. And with uh, the Eagles jumping all over the place, um, you're going to want to catch as many of those games as you can. Great deals on there. Great packages. Have a look. Philadelphia Union is still in the playoffs. You want to take a look at that as well. As well as spring training. You can start talking about that soon. And that will be up there also for trips over to Clearwater for the Phillies, I believe it is. So, But, yeah, guys, I uh, I think that that uh, be interesting to see when they start putting out the offensive ones and some of the other ones out in the next week or so. Um, who they're going to exactly put up there because God knows that there are a lot of guys that that argument can go to. And, uh, you know, almost every team has got one. Mind you, we know that Jeff Teat will probably wind up as that number one guy, right? Yeah, pretty. Probably. It's probably him or Dane Smith. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, Dane Smith could be up there too. Yeah. 
Mind you, you could say Josh Byrne too, for that matter, yeah. if he's healthy. Yeah, that's the only big. That's the knock on him. Tom Schreiber. You know, and we if we go to the West, you know, just take a look at any number of people on San Diego. You know, Curtis Dixon, Dane Dolby. You know, we we go on and on and on. How about uh, Lyle Thompson? Come to mind. Yeah. We could probably be talking about Miles Thompson if it all goes well. You know, just how about uh, Austin Shanks? Step forth, you know. You know, it's not showboat, but he's definitely consistent. You know, and he was a, a huge part of Lang of, uh, of Ladner winning the uh, the Prezi. You know, Ryan Banesh, another huge part of them winning the Prezi, and, and be a big big part of uh, this championship run. So. And let's not, I was going to say, let's not forget to Philly too. I mean, Mitch mm-hmm. Jones and Joe Restera, it's both over a hundred points. In fact, they were, you know, both top six yeah. in scoring yeah. this year. Well, brings you also to Holden Katoni with a blast like that. Or even, you know, it's funny because, you know, uh, when I was talking to uh, Holden and Tate's father, uh, Guido, you know, let's not forget Tate. Tate came in and he outscored uh, a good chunk of them in half a season. Just, just coming in and, you know, being the role player. Well, he doesn't have to be a role player now. He can be deadly part of that offense. And he showed it in Peterborough in the summer that uh, he can be a huge part of that uh, that offensive prowess. And Paul Day knows that very well, being the GM of Peterborough. So, you know, there's all kinds of weapons there. Uh, I was even going to say in Saskatchewan, you got Church. I mean, he's pretty steady in that – pretty close to 100 point guy yep. um even he's got not much of a resume still yet but dodds could even maybe even be in that conversation uh sure sure you got a number of young players too yeah. so it's going to be very very interesting i just want to end uh before we uh we go to our final stuff here uh remember that uh david r cherry is part of this program as well All right, guys, let's talk about Cherry Law Firm. If you get hurt at work in a motor vehicle accident, personal injury, or affected by criminal law, you got to call David R. Cherry of the Cherry Firm. Call 610-565-0300 or go to cherryinjurylaw.com. Let David R. Cherry fight for your rights. Again, that number is 610-565-0300. That's 610-565-0300 or go to cherryinjurylaw.com. Let David R. Cherry fight for your right. Absolutely. And if you're on too many of these Philly sports trips, you might need them anyways, right? <laughs> A dog Remember? cracks you up every time, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that we are on Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> Instagram. Thanks, Mike. Uh, YouTube and uh, Thread. And uh, come back to us two, three, four, five times a day. The news is always changing. The NLL has been making a lot of announcements lately. There's a lot of outside things going on. There's going to be a lot of cuts coming in the next week, week and a half uh, for teams to trim down to their 25-man roster, 21 plus four. And uh, – you know, some teams are close and some teams aren't. So there's going to be a lot of movement over the next little bit. So you're going to want to be with us throughout. Uh, have a look at our YouTube thing. I brought it forward uh, the YouTube stuff at the beginning, but uh, there are more games coming up in the next week or so. Uh, retro games of Mill. Um, there's some interesting stuff and a lot of players that uh, you are now cheering as coaches now. It was funny having uh, Rich Kilgore on the other show. And we're talking about uh, some of the uh, some of the fine stuff that we're going in mill, where you had to be a tough guy just to survive that stuff. We talked about the one time when O'Neill uh, uh, took liberties with uh, Tavares in the crease, and uh, before you knew it, uh, O'Neill Marty O'Neill was uh, sailing into the boards uh, from uh, Kilgore, who uh, who got him at the full board. You know, stuff there that would be a change of possession would probably get you five games now in the NLL. So just to put it in perspective of how tough these guys were, different different style, different form. It was uh, marketed differently, everything. But uh, to watch these games uh, brings me back personally to my days ago into the Memorial Odd 
and watching Bandit games in the 90s and uh, really having a great time. So I'm having a great time uh, having these converted and putting them up. So there's lots of those things up there. There's interviews. There's all kinds of other things. There's fights. There's uh, different uh, little aspects of it. We want to use it as a tool to bring you even more information than we can now. So if we can get the, enough subscribers in there, then we can use it as a uh, as a tool for. So tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody else that All Across All the Time is on YouTube. And please subscribe to it as well so that we can keep doing what we're doing. And again, uh, come visit us on Facebook. You can always check us out at eopsports.com slash lacrosse. Uh, for everything you need. There's uh, two more outlooks to come. Mike, you've got which one this week? Uh, I think it's you, actually. you got uh, Rochester Tuesday. I have Rochester, yeah. And then I think the following Tuesday, uh, I'll wrap up with Panther City. All right. So those are the last two on the list. So come check that out uh, this week. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to all my American friends. Uh, us Canadians, we do things early. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> happy happy day, Mike. Enjoy. Thanks. Sit and watch football while waiting for lacrosse. In Definitely. fact, use your keep your lacrosse stick in your hands while you're watching football. Yeah. Use your throw the ball that way. Anyway. <laughs> Any last words, Sean? No, just looking forward to uh this exhibition or preseason game, I should say, uh in Moose Jaw. Uh, I'll be there with all the coverage for it. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to hear about it because, man, it is going to be loud in there. Oh, yeah. Any last words, Mike? No, Before you get the turkey going. Just, yeah, yeah, just curious uh, curious to see uh, what kind of uh, cuts we're going to see this week and uh, into next week, I guess, and see yeah. how these teams shape up. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to Philadelphia rolling into town for their last preseason game on Saturday. I will be at track with a lot of other people. Uh, that place filled up really quickly uh, last weekend. So if you're going to go there and get a seat, get there quickly, get their early doors open at six for a seven o'clock game. I believe it is a toy drive for the Oakville fire department. So if you want to be part of a separate draw, bring an unwrapped toy and uh, help you get a Christmas as well. So, um, really, really great stuff. Last week was a clothing drive. So, you know, might as well put our time to good use. Again, if you want to take a look at that, uh, the R2 Sesslar um, documentary, it is on our page. It is on my Facebook page. It is also on Global and on Lacrosse History. But if you want to just head on to All Across All the Time, because there's a bunch of other news that you want to check out as well, that documentary is well worth your time to have a look at. For Sean Slatt over in Moose Jaw, and for Muffler Mike before Thanksgiving, Turkey, Connecticut. <laughs> 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 I am Gary Groob in Toronto, wishing everybody happy Thanksgiving this week. Happy Black Friday. Stay safe, guys. And we will see you next Sunday at 9 p.m., like always, where we'll be discussing the final week before the season comes to fruition. Until then, keep your stick in your hands, be safe, and we'll see you next week.